Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're continuing our Liu Bei's early life Let's Talk Lore series with episode 2, titled Liu Bei's Militia. Now last time we ended by mentioning how Liu Bei's natural charisma and maturity helped him attract quite the following in his hometown of the Zhuo County ever since returning from his one-year tutelage under Lu Zhi in the year 176. And this personal entourage, which included the likes of Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, and Jian Yong, would transform itself into a local militia force in 184 with the outbreak of the Yellow Turban Rebellion. At the time, because of Liu Bei's innate ability to make friends, he was able to get additional funding from two horse merchants based out of Zhongshan in Zhang Shiping and Su Shuang, as they not only provided Liu Bei with horses, but also a sizable starting capital that Liu Bei was able to use to conscript more men to turn his small entourage into a decently sized militia force. Now, while the Zhuo County was located in the north, relatively close to the main Yellow Turban forces at Julu, it was never a main battlefield and only suffered a few small-scale Yellow Turban incursions, which by all accounts were beaten back by the local garrison with help from Liu Bei's militia. And unlike the romance accounts, Liu Bei's militia never joined up with any of the main Han armies as they remained in the Zhuo commandery throughout the rebellion. Therefore, given Liu Bei's small contribution, it should come as no surprise that he was not awarded any government post at the end of the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Instead, it was Zhang Chun's rebellion in the north that had actually afforded Liu Bei the opportunity to earn himself his first government job. For those who have not seen our rise and fall of Gong Sun Zan lore series, Zhang Chun was the chancellor of the princedom of Zhongshan, and in 184, on the heels of the Yellow Turban Rebellion, the western provinces of Liang also suffered a large rebellion. So in response, the central government decided to conscript a new regiment of Wuhan auxiliary riders from the northeast, to aid in the war out west. At the time, there were many who were vying to become the new commander for this regiment, including Zhang Chun, but he was spurned by Grand Excellency Zhang Wen, who opted for Gong Sun Zan to lead the regiment. Unable to get over this rejection, Zhang Chun would openly rebel against the Han alongside another wealthy gentry member in Zhongshan in Zhang Ju who was a former administrator of Taishan, as the two of them would muster up a force of around 9,000 men. And their rebellion would really get out of hand when the Wuhan chieftain, Qiu Liju, joined forces with them, as they would go on to kill the lieutenant of Wuhan in Gong Qi Chou, administrator of Yu Beiping, Liu Zheng, and the administrator of Liao Dong, Yang Zhong, which in turn gave them free reign to pillage the northeast. Then in 188, the imperial court decided to send General Meng Yi to team up with Gong Sun Zan's forces in the area in an attempt to bring this rebellion under control. And it was at this time that Liu Bei's militia joined up with the official Han army for the very first time. Yet Liu Bei's experience during Zhang Chun's rebellion would not be a great one as it was recorded that one battle went so poorly for Liu Bei that he had to hide himself amongst the dead in order to survive the ordeal. But for his overall contributions throughout the rebellion, Liu Bei was finally given his first government appointment after the rebellion had ended to become the mayor of Anxi County inside the Zhongshan Commandery. However, Liu Bei's appointment here would not last very long, as with most of the regional rebellions now over, Emperor Liu Hong and the imperial court started to crack down on new officials who had earned their position through their war merits, as there were two main concerns. First, Emperor Liu Hong had emptied much of his personal coffers during the two major rebellions and now wanted to recoup his losses financially by selling more government positions, which meant current positions needed to become available. 
Second, and more importantly, the imperial court felt that most of the wartime appointments did not go to the gentry clan, and thus the candidates were not up to par. Thus, edicts went out to all the administrators, asking them to send out duyo, or commandery inspectors, to all the counties, and inspect to see if all these new wartime appointees fitted the bill. But even before the commandery inspector would arrive at Anxi County to inspect Liu Bei, Liu Bei learned that he was already on the list of officials that would lose their jobs because Liu Bei did not come from a notable gentry clan with connections at court, nor did Liu Bei have money to bribe these inspectors. Trying to plead his case that he was a good mayor and deserved a chance, Liu Bei tried to schedule a meeting with the commandery inspector once he had arrived at Anxi County. Yet when the inspector arrived, he refused to meet Liu Bei, claiming that he did not feel well. Furthermore, he did not even inspect Liu Bei's work as he merely checked into his room at the local inn and stayed the night as if this inspection was just a formality. Frustrated by this injustice, Liu Bei stormed into the inn, tied up the inspector, and whipped him 200 times before fleeing the county with his entourage. For those who are familiar with the Romance of the Three Kingdoms novel, this historical event was adapted in the novel to where Zhang Fei did the beatings which forced Liu Bei to flee from his job as a means to build up Zhang Fei's character as a rash brute. Now, after Liu Bei fled Anxi County, he decided to travel south as there was news that the Grand General He Jin had sent General Guan Qiu Yi to Danyang to conscript a new army for the emperor. But before he would reach Danyang, his entourage would bump into a bandit raid around Xia Pi, and after helping the locals fight off the bandits, Liu Bei was elected by the locals to become their new temporary mayor in a small county called Xiami. But since Liu Bei was not an official appointee, he had to resign not long after, once the new appointee arrived. But seeing that this area was unsafe and riff with bandits, Liu Bei and his militia would stay behind and become the county garrison for a neighboring county called Gautang, where Liu Bei would work his way up to become the next mayor there. However, the same bandits that had gifted Liu Bei this opportunity would also be the ones to end it, as Gautang County would be overrun by bandits in late 190, as Liu Bei and what remained of his militia would be casted out once again. Now, with no clear directions, Liu Bei decided to bring his men home, as in 191, they returned north, this time to join Liu Bei's old classmate, Gong Sun Zan. As Gong Sun Zan was in the process of recruiting new troops to fight in his new war against Yuan Shao. Now, despite their prior relationship, Gong Sun Zan did not give Liu Bei any special treatment, as Liu Bei was made into Bie Bu Sima, which was pretty much the lowest officer rank in the army, and sent to join General Tian Kai to fight Yuan Shao's forces in the Pingyuan area. More importantly, Gong Sun Zan would give Liu Bei a small group of cavalry to supplement his militia units, and the leader of this group of cavalry would be none other than Zhao Yun, who had also recently joined Gong Sun Zan. So Zhao Yun naturally became Liu Bei's captain of the cavalry, as the two of them would bond almost instantly. And it was here that finally Liu Bei found himself a home, as he ended up serving first as the mayor of Pingyuan County, before earning a promotion to become the chancellor of the entire princedom of Pingyuan, which is equivalent to an administrator, except at this time, Pingyuan was still classified as a princedom instead of a commandery. And it was also here that Liu Bei would show his benevolence, as it was recorded that aside from being capable at defending Pingyuan from bandits and keeping the populace safe, Liu Bei treated everyone, even the commoners and the poor, as equals. When he would visit the poor, he would share the same floor mats and eat from the same bowl, as Liu Bei knew full well what it was like to grow up poor. But of course, not everyone liked Liu Bei's rule, as a man by the name of Liu Ping 
would end up hiring an assassin to kill Liu Bei. But when the assassin approached Liu Bei, Liu Bei greeted him warmly and politely, which touched the assassin, who had been told that Liu Bei was a corrupt official. Seeing that that was not the case, the assassin would abandon his mission and instead inform Liu Bei of the plot on his life before leaving. And it was precisely because of this reputation of benevolence that Liu Bei had earned himself while serving in Pingyuan that when the neighboring princedom of Beihai came under attack by Yellow Turban forces led by Guan Hai, the chancellor of Beihai at the time, Kong Rong, sent Tai Shi Ci to Pingyuan in order to ask Liu Bei for aid. And with that, our episode here comes to an end, as we'll return next time to see how Liu Bei's military aid would eventually land him the entire Xu province. So hopefully you all enjoyed this episode enough to hit that like button to help support the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!